Is Canada a national security threat to the United States to justify Section 232? So. That's a yes or no. Well, it was just the beginning of the answer. Um, the way you have to start with the proposition that you think you need to, 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 to help the steel industry, for example. If you're going to do it, you have to put it, you have to do it globally. You can't help the industry by just putting on tariffs against one, one uh, country. Because if you, first of all, we have tariffs on China, and that's what the problem is. The product then comes in through other sources. So if you're making, if your decision is we're going to have the United States pay higher prices for steel to save an industry, you've made that decision, and hopefully you come to the point where, the, where you're, where you're, the price increase is, is worth the pain. And people have different ideas of where that point is, but this is logically how you would do it. You can't be in a position where the ben all the benefits of that, for example, come into the, uh, go to the Canadian steel manufacturers. You have to be in a position where the benefit, if we're paying the price, the benefit goes to the United States steel producers. So you have to do something to stop uh, the, Senator Long used to have a great comment, which was, if you have one hole in the net, all the fish will swim through it if you give them enough time. You have to be in a position where you don't have a hole in the net. That's not to suggest that we think army tanks are going to come in from Canada. The point is that if you've made an, a decision that it's in the national interest to save the steel industry, then you have to put in place a program that actually works. And that requires not having holes in the net. Otherwise, Okay, now we're down to the yes or no. Is Canada a national security threat to the United States, justifying Section 232 action against Canada? Yes or no? Uh, in the case of steel, yes, absolutely. Because of the nature of the program, for sure. That, that's, that, it, otherwise, program. you don't have a program. You don't but, have a program if you let some... No, no, land. I'm not talking about a program. You have identified a country. I'm sorry? You've identified a country. The basis for the, the, the action against Canada is a threat to the national security of the United States. You have walked around that question for the last several minutes and saying the whole program has to go into effect. Let me put it another way, okay? okay? Uh, it, this is a country that has sent forces to Afghanistan. Those forces have, some of them unfortunately, have given their lives in a joint effort with the United States. This is a country since the 1950s has been maintaining our early warning for attack then the Soviet Union, now Russia. This is a country who uses our equipment. This is a country who has been with us every step of the way. And I guess, again, are they a national security threat to the United States, justifying legally, your own way, the imposition of this 232? And, and my answer is, if you are of the opinion that the 232 is justified because of the, of the need to preserve the U.S. If that is your decision, then you have to put in place a provision, a program that actually works. And that means every country has to have, you can't let, you can't let all this fuel come in through any other country. Otherwise, the program doesn't make any sense. That's the context. Nobody's declaring war on Canada or saying they're an unfriendly neighbor. They're obviously not. They're a great ally and, and, and uh, certainly one of America's closest friends and closest trading partners. But if you decide that you need to protect an industry, you can't be in a position where the protection is of no value. But the decision, everything comes in but your the decision based, Mr. Matthew, you decided that you want to do something for, for the industry or not do something for the industry, and then you've climbed on to Section 232 because it's the only available legal status of the president, but that premise is national security of the United States. Um, and I don't know what kind of data or information you have that would show that Canadian imports uh, of steel or any other products would impair the functioning of our steel industry. Um, I don't think you've got a good legal basis for what you're doing. Well, I mean, that's, a, I mean, that's the fundamental question. The fundamental question is, do you think, it's not really about, in my judgment, well, I'll do it. It's not really about Canada or Mexico or Europe. It's about do you think having a steel industry is, is a national security issue? And if you conclude that it is, then you have to put in place a position. If you conclude that it isn't, then you don't do no, anything. No, that's not true. That's the You're, fundamental Mr. issue. Mr. Ambassador. But that's the... Mr. Ambassador, okay. Uh, so, so let's... What else can we invoke Section 232 for? 
I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, can we vex, uh, can we use Section 230 to protect Hollywood, the entertainment industry? To, to do, I'm sorry. Can we use Section 232 to protect Hollywood, the entertainment industry? Because we want to maintain an entertainment industry in the United States. The inter, the so entertainment China is a China is a threat to us. France is a threat to us. Those 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 new wave films are just cutting the heck out of us. I, you are using you're using national security as kind of a, a generalized. Uh, premise, and I don't think valid premise, to, to, to go after uh, countries, individual countries that are, frankly, ironically, are contributing more to our national security than, than they're contributing a lot. Let me stop there. But uh, uh, my time has expired. <laughs>